Um, if you take a look at our next topic here, that's viscosity, okay? Viscosity measures this resistance to flow, okay? So things that are very viscous are like maple syrup or honey, okay, those kind of things. Things that have low viscosity are like gasoline um, or like your um, like cleaners, those kind of things that tend to have very low viscosity. They flow really easily, okay? So viscosity is this resistance to flow. Okay? If you think about it, to be able to flow or to be able to move means that molecules have to slide past each other, which means they can't be locked by intermolecular forces. So you, the higher your velocity, the harder it is to flow. Since intermolecular forces hold things together, and to flow you have to actually separate or slide past each other, we should see that intermolecular forces will kind of control our viscosities also. So let's take a look at our data. Diethyl ether. Okay? You end up having, you know, you know, four carbons in here. You have a polar molecule, so this will be dipole-dipole. Uh, we do get a polar molecule here um, in here. Actually, yeah, we do get a polar molecule here inside of this. Um, then you have acetone, which again, we have another polar molecule. Um, and then you end up with ethanol, which is a polar molecule with hydrogen bonding on it. And then ethylene glycol, which is a polar molecule with hydrogen bonding. So we have... Um, Two of them that are only dipole-dipole, and two of them that are actually able to hydrogen bond. So what we see is the two that are just dipole-dipole, their viscosities are pretty close to each other. This one's a little bit higher um, because of this oxygen is actually sticking out, and that allows it to have a little bit stronger uh, intermolecular force versus this one, which is kind of crowded or kind of hidden inside of here. Um, and then ethanol has a single spot for it to hydrogen bond where ethylene glycol has two locations that allows hydrogen bonding, so it has a bigger hydrogen bonding effect. So we end up getting this viscosity as a result of that. So once again, the higher your intermolecular force, or the better you are at holding things together, the higher that viscosity. Okay. Now that's assuming, of course, just having equal temperatures. If we take a look at the change in temperature in terms of our viscosity, kind of an interesting happens here also. So a lot of times you may have, if you heard of like different oils for cars and those kind of things, you have your 10 weight oil, 30 weight, and then 10W30, and you may have no idea what those numbers mean, but you know, if you open up your engine by the oil cap, it says use 5W20 or use 0W5 or whatever it happens to tell you depending on your car, okay? What that means is basically these are numbers that tell you viscosity based off of temperature, okay? So typically what they do is they measure temperatures down to the lowest that you're going to be running that oil. So basically negative 20 degrees Celsius, that would be a really cold starting engine, um, up to about the boiling point of water, and that becomes close to the operating temperature of your car, okay? Cars usually run somewhere about 200 to 250 degrees Fahrenheit or just a little bit above 100 degrees Celsius, okay? Um, so if you take a look, your 10 weight oil in the blue line it has a viscosity that is lower than 30, okay? So if you needed that, it just means that it's going to flow a little bit um, less than the 30 is. So the 30 weight flows um, less, sorry, and the 10 flows more, okay? Which means the 30 weight is more viscous than the 10 is. So if you notice, if you get the 10W30, the reason why we have these double-numbered oils now is because you want to get the best of both worlds. You want to have it flow better um, when it's really cold, but when it gets up to operating temperature, not be too thin. So that's kind of the trick for oil is you want it to work well when your engine is cold and starting, but you also want it to not thin out too much when it actually ends up um, uh, running at high temperatures. Okay, so these multi uh, viscosity oils have been developed and kind of created to do that. All right, but in any case, if you look in all scenarios, as things warm up, the viscosity goes down which means as things get warmer, they have more energy. If they have more energy, particles are moving faster. So if they have more energy and moving faster, they obviously can break your intermolecular forces easier, so they actually can slide past each other easier. So we end up getting this scenario where higher temperature will have more energy, which then allows them to break free of these intermolecular forces uh, than lowering your viscosity, okay? So if you have an interest in cars and this kind of stuff, I can talk to you more about that, but I'm sure that's more than enough for most of you on how that kind of stuff works. The take-home is whatever it tells you on the cap, that's the oil you use for your car, okay?